Hello, my name's Madeline Gray. I'm the Collections Assistant for Decorative Arts for North Lincolnshire Museum Service, and I'm based at Normanby Hall. I'm in the Normanby War Gallery on the first floor of Normanby Hall to talk to you a little bit about the First World War. Did you know that between November 1914 and January 1919, Normanby Hall was an auxiliary hospital for convalescing soldiers? So all of the ground floor, pretty much, was turned over and uh, loads of beds were put in. Did you know that these two beds here are original to Normanby Hall from the First World War? And they've got wheels on them so that the patients could be wheeled outside for a fresh air treatment. So when the soldiers came here, it was the last stage of their treatment. If they were injured on the front line and they couldn't be patched up at the casualty clearing station and be passed back to the front line again, then they would be put on a hospital ship and sent out to wherever they could get a space in whichever country and whichever hospital to, uh, to be treated. So once they were well enough, they would come to an auxiliary hospital, so stately homes got turned over to be um, auxiliary hospitals, town halls, schools, loads of public buildings, and this would be the last stage of their recovery. So a lot of bandage changing and a lot of rest, and there were VAD nurses that used to carry out this work and look after them and help them on their last stages of recovery um, before they were either discharged or sent back to the front line. 1,248 patients passed through these doors between 1914 and 1919. That's a lot of people. You can see in the background here some original hospital blues. And the soldiers had to wear these hospital blues when they were out and about with a bright red tie. And this was to identify them as convalescing soldiers. And apparently one of those reasons was so that they wouldn't get served in the local pub. But the people in Burton in the local village took such an interest in them. We had people here from Canada, Australia, Belgium and all over the UK. Um, it didn't matter where you were from, you were just sent anywhere to recover. We know that some of the soldiers stayed. There was Thomas MacLeod was a Canadian and he fell in love with a Burton girl um, because she used to come and serve tea here. And, and he stayed. He never went back to Canada again. Um, sadly, we also know that some of the patients that convalesced here uh, were sent back to the front line and they didn't make it. We also know that some people that used to work here, like in the gardens, they were also sent to the front line and some of them didn't make it back either. There was a Walter Borum was a gardener and he didn't come back. I think it was quite an amazing thing that everybody chipped in to help during the First World War. And that wasn't the only thing that they did either. The Sheffield family, and they turned over their South Audley residence as well in London, in Mayfair. That was a, a, sold, a, a, a hospital for Russian officers. Um, Sir Barclay was really involved in the war effort. He um, went on an allied mission to Russia doing secretarial duties. When, whenever he came back to the hall, he used to take the soldiers on hunting parties because they had the full run of the place. Um, they had all of the ground floor. They had a recreation room in what is now the period dining room. The, the family's billiard table was in there. And they... Um, they had all of the use of the grounds and the golf course and everything. And um, they would get taken to Elsham Hall for sports and tea. Um, so it was really quite a nice place to convalesce, I think. Um, Lady Julia was the commandant who, um, it was quite common for the lady of the house to be the commandant. And she would um, just look after the running of the hospital, keep her finger in the pie. The, all of the, um, the nursing duties were overseen by the matron, Louisa Denton. And it wasn't the, the only time that Normanby was used during the war effort. During the Second World War, there were lots of um, different groups based here. Um, one of the, the most well-known was the, um, the, the assault squadron who were testing secretly amphibious tanks on the Trent up at Burton. They put a screen up um, and it was all meant to be quite secret. And this helped um, to figure out um, and invent tanks that were, could go underwater and that could float along the top so that they could cross the river and they were using these um, to help towards the D-Day landings. I think it's really quite amazing um, what the Sheffield family did and what everybody did during these wars and I sometimes have a little think about those people that came through here, the 1,248 of them and what they'd been through and what they'd seen um, 
Clara Spillman, one of the nurses here, one of the VAD nurses, kept a diary. And there's three words from one of the soldiers, because they all put their autographs in it. And one of them, the three words, is silence is golden. Can you imagine what it must have been like for them on the front? And the noise and, and what they'd seen, and then to come somewhere gorgeous like here for the last stage of, of their recovery. I sometimes think about that as well. And sometimes I like to come in here and just have a minute and say thank you.